Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art and culture, and this is Billboard Breakdown. So one of my general assumptions going into this week on the Hot 100 is since that we had so many new songs courtesy of the weekend's Beauty Behind the Madness, we'd have a comparable number of dropouts. It's a good rule of thumb, after all, as most album cuts don't just tend to stick on the mainstream charts for that long. And it's true, a few of them did drop out, but not nearly as many as I was predicting. In other words, we got a pretty lightweight week here, a fair amount of movement within the charts, but not nearly as many new arrivals as I was expecting, which in this case didn't turn out all that. That well and a similar sense of inertia seemed to apply for our top 10 as well well it's out of the very top that is as i expected can't feel my face by the weekend rallied hard to knock justin bieber back off the top with solid sales and streaming but really it held on to the top pretty much thanks to still maintaining huge radio presence albeit some incremental slip-ups here it has peaked on the radio at this point and it's not alone in that regard because in a rare consecutive number one and number two the weekend also has the hills which followed up another airplay surge with strong sales hefty streaming and even picking up some gains on youtube to. My guess is that The weekend will probably end up replacing himself at the very top, which is pretty rare in today's day and age. But Justin Bieber's What Do You Mean is still a contender at number three, dominating sales and streaming with heavy YouTube. He's only here because his radio hasn't caught up yet and still so he's stuck at number three. And it'll be interesting to see how fast he manages to pick up some steam. And yet, beneath all the action there, there was a lot of stasis for the rest of the top ten. So let's blow through these pretty quickly. Silento's Watch Me Holds on number four, basically on sales and YouTube. And even there, it's losing steam. Not fast enough. While Cheer leader by Omi faces some steep losses in sales, airplay, streaming, pretty much across the board. Only on number five, basically on radio inertia at this point. Number six goes to Lean On by Major Lazer, DJ Snake, and Mia, which balances out its weak sales with more inertia on airplay and streaming and a sudden rebound to top on YouTube, where Good For You by Selena Gomez and ASAP Rocky compensates for its weak sales by even more gains on airplay and streaming. Beneath that, we had 679 by Fetty Wap, which had good sales and even picked up a bit of airplay, but let's be honest here, it's really here thanks to heavy streaming and little else. And yet, it managed to hold out against Locked Away by Rock City featuring Adam Levine at number 9, which continued to pick up airplay and have big sales, but that streaming isn't quite there yet, which is holding it back from growing any faster. Finally, we've got our first new, our only new, top 10 entry. And wow, it's a total snoozer. Photographed by Ed Sheeran. You know, it's kind of bizarre. You'd think that after Ed Sheeran released two groove-heavy pop songs, he would want to keep up that momentum instead of this trickly bore. Or at least if he was gunning for sentiment, release the Fire of Love instead. Easily the best gut punch track of his career, one of my favorite songs of 2014. Anyway, this is here because it somehow managed to pick up stupid amounts of airplay without anyone really noticing it, including me, and that's pretty much it. No sales, no significant streaming, no YouTube, just the radio. And starting the radio place the lowest common denominator and thinking out loud was such a huge shit, that's not that much of a shock. So moving away from that depressing fact, let's talk about something more uplifting, namely our losers and our dropouts. Not that many big ones in the latter camp this week, just young and crazy by Frankie Ballard sputtering out early, and Hey Mama by David Guetta, Nicki Minaj, BB Rexa, and Afrojack finally exiting the charts. We had more in the camp of losses, the majority from songs by The Weeknd losing hard, Shameless dropping to 99, Real Life dropping to 79, Prisoner with Lana Del Rey dropping to 77, Acquainted falling to 72, and Tell Your Friends falling down to 70. Beyond those, there's only one other loss that genuinely surprised me. I mean, I expected One Man Change the World by Big Sean with Kanye West and John Legend to fall back to 94, that song has never had much consistent momentum, and should have been us by Tori Kelly falling hard to 68, not a surprise either. VMA name recognition doesn't last that long. No, the loss that surprised me was Cheyenne by Jason Derulo. I mean, he's got a great groove, decent lyrics, not the best vocals, but people have overlooked that with Jason Derulo before, so why hasn't this song been bigger? Maybe he just plays a little bit too dark for the end of the summer and the beginning of the fall, but that hasn't stopped the hills from nearly topping the charts. Instead, this song fell hard again to 95, which I'll admit, that's a disappointment. I hope this would do better. And speaking of disappointment, I don't have a lot of kind words for most of our gains this week either. If Let Me See a Girl by Cole Swindle going up to 78 and Gonna Wanna Tonight by Chase Rice rising to 86, is this a sign of what country programmers are trying to plug the gaps in the radio with? Not a good sign. Nor is it good that No Role Models, one of J. Cole's worst ever songs, rose up to 76. Fortunately, we do have some gains that aren't that bad. Nothing Like You by Dan and Shay holds steady for pop country going up to 81. Comfortable by K-Camp rises up some lightweight ease in his upcoming album to 54. 
How Deep Is Your Love by Calvin Harris and Disciples goes up to 45, proving he can still make Deep House just as boring as his EDM, and most encouragingly, Levels by Nick Jonas keeps his momentum to 60. You know, if this is what the mainstream public chose instead of Cheyenne to top on the radio, I think I'd be okay with that to be honest, so let's hope this keeps up. And on that note, let's head to our surprisingly sparse list of returning entries, starting with... Okay, yeah, I'll admit it. Last time I covered this, I mistakenly attributed You're So Vain to the wrong person. I should remember it was Carly Simon, considering I should remember who to blame for a surprisingly annoying song. Yeah, I don't really like You're So Vain all that much. This song, fortunately, is a lot better, taking the tinkling, slick melody that modernized the opulence of the original recording and pairing it with one of Trey Song's more down-key performances. That really is pure fan service all the way through, but it's the right kind of fan service, at least for me. So there, ladies, if you want Trey Song's, even in just a room full of women who all want him and especially if you want this song to be all about you he definitely delivers here On the other hand, ladies, if you're fantasized about getting Chris Brown so drunk that even the auto-tune warble sounds unattractive, and then potentially slipping something in his drink which makes consent questionable against a synth line that burbles offbeat and only barely works with the dusty percussion, and all of it being so minimalist that it lacks any sort of punch or even heavy bass, or all he wants to do is drink and fuck, well, okay, I question your taste a little bit here, but frankly, I'd be questioning whether fans are giving him a pass for this, because this sure as hell isn't all that attractive or likable or good. So now on to our new arrivals, and we only have four new songs this week, starting with number 98, Jinza by J Balvin. <laughs> You know, for as much political rhetoric as you hear in the United States that the rate of Hispanic population growth will make Spanish required to get by in the mainstream world, you wouldn't know it by the state of pop radio, where a song can notch number two on the US Latin charts and break onto the Hot 100 near the very bottom. In this case, from Colombian reggaeton artist J Balvin, who's most well known for his 2013 album La Familia, which led to two Latin top five hits. This is his third, entirely in Spanish, and the first of any of his hits to crack the Hot 100, and I'll admit my unfair familiarity with a lot of reggaeton puts me at a bit of a disadvantage here, but I think this is pretty good. The skittering tap of the melody is pretty damn catchy, even if I do think that faint noisy percussion and occasional thin buzzing squeals do detract from it a bit. As from Jay Balvin himself, he's a bit smoother than I usually expect to see in reggaeton, at least vocally, until you get to the lyrics, which admittedly whatever translations I were able to find basically show this song as a pretty skeevy hookup track on the dance floor, where they're going to go screw like animals. And with those growls he includes, it reminds me a bit of when Justin Timberlake like tried it on the 2020 experience two of two and overall it feels a little bit overdone to me as a whole not a bad track per se but i'm not sure it's gonna be one i'm looking to hear again so i guess i'll give it a pass number 84 white iverson by post malone watch out oh watch out oh watch out yeah that's my shot that's my shot that's my shot spending i'm spending on my fucking pay you know, I'm inclined to blame Iggy Azalea for this. I mean, sure, we've had plenty of white rappers before, both in the mainstream and underground, but she was probably the first to explicitly co-op flows and accents to make herself sound black to get popularity. It's all a manner of controversy that her public persona and Twitter did not help. Now, in her case, she at least did have some technical skill in constructing flows, and she had some personality, enough so that I will probably end up covering her sophomore album when she drops it, but I don't think I'm going to be doing that for Post Malone here. Most because he fused the 
auto-tuned melodic brand of modern rap popularized by Rich Homie Kwan and Fetty Wap and Young Thug and their ilk with the tepid presentation of an artist like Jack Johnson. In other words, the worst of both worlds. Not only is the mix a washed out, reverb drenched bore, the trap beat against the limp piano does nothing to support a rapper who sounds like Justin Bieber on cold medicine trying to fake a Jamaican accent. And that's where we get to the content <sighs> and look. White rappers have a tendency to try to explore their whiteness in contrast to a traditionally black art form. And I don't usually have a problem with that because where Eminem and Yellow Wolf found white trash roots and Asher Roth found college dorm room dumbassery, but they need music too. Post Malone finds the limp, spaced out cod reggae that completely lacks anything remotely interesting or political. It only draws more attention to that whiteness by calling the song White Iverson and loading it with clumsy basketball references that aren't even that good. I might have considered Asher Roth's retro hash a complete disaster. Well, it's because it is. It really is embarrassing. But this doesn't even have the ideas or thematic ambition behind that album to go as far. And unlike Riff Raff, it doesn't have the energy or ridiculousness to deliver any sort of interesting flows or bars. This is tepid, bland garbage of the basis variety. And at Just World, this novelty will be the end of this guy's career. Next, number 83, Burn Slow by Wiz Khalifa featuring Ray Shrimmer. You know we're not having a good week on the Hot 100 when a Wiz Khalifa song with Ray Shrimmer might be one of the better tracks I'm covering. And really, it's nothing even all that special when it comes to weed songs. I still argue that Wiz Khalifa doesn't exactly sound all that good against this brand of heavier, darker production, and his flossing of wealth and getting high, and his own personal brand of weed doesn't do much for me, especially when there's the implication that he screws girls so hard they break. Yikes. But beyond that, this isn't bad. For once, Wiz Khalifa finally looks like he's tightened up some of his wordplay and his Rhymes almost all connect against that hazy, oscillating vibe courtesy of Mike Well Made Him. On top of that, Sway Lee of Ray Shrimmer's normally insufferable voice is downplayed considerably, making him all the more anonymous and thus kind of tolerable, even as that coughing that punctuates the chorus sure as hell doesn't make the sound anything close to glamorous. As it is, I don't hate this song, but it does feel generic over Mike Well Made It's eerie, bass-heavy trap production, which I feel I've heard so many times before, and all the more signs that any relevance that Wiz Khalifa had from See You Again is more because of Charlie Puth than his actual bars. Finally, number 75, Antidote by Travis Scott. Don't you let up that antidote. You know, I don't remember saying anything about Antidote when I reviewed Travis Scott's debut album Rodeo a couple weeks ago, mostly because there's so little to say. The second song this week, they about getting high and partying, it suffers many of the same issues that I run into with a lot of these songs being suffocated in dreary, bass-heavy synths, and distinctly not feeling much energy to get really get hyped to. Coupled with the gratuitous autotune that's slathered all over Travis Scott's vocals, and the un completely unnecessary faded shouts behind his lines to operate as his own personal hype man, and the fact that he's talking about taking and screwing you or a girl, there's only two things I can really recommend about this song. The first, the third verse, where he snaps together to deliver a pretty solid flow, and the second is the suffocatingly thick atmosphere of the song that does anchor itself in a melody. I do kind of respect the production more than like it, but beyond that, I'm sorry, I get nothing from this, I'd probably skip it. Well, that was our week, and wow, it's been a long time since I've heard a week this bad. With only six songs, I'm dropping the honorable and dishonorable mentions this week, but even then, picking a worse of the week is a doozy. Sure, Trey songs runs away with About You for the best of the week, but beyond that, well, Chris Brown's already gotten before, but White Iverson by Post Malone is more stunningly bland and incompetent, so it's snagging the worst of the week here. Dear God, let's hope for better next week, but until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown on Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.